Welcome to Plant Soil Science Spotlight. My name is Josh Lofton and today we're talking corn maturity. So I'm in a cornfield late in the season and harvest is just around the corner. And as we get later in the season, certain aspects become more and more important. And one of those is accurately staging your crop. Now you might start asking yourself, why is staging the crop so accurate late in the season? Well, one and potentially the most obvious answer is harvest. When can we get the combine start rolling through the field and collecting the grain? As we get later in the season, the reproductive growth stages of corn become more predictable and the time between each stage can actually be used as a tool to determine if we're going to be harvesting in a couple of months, maybe a couple of weeks, or just a couple of days down the road. In addition, certain management practices, such as maybe insect management, weed management, or if you're under irrigation, water management are still very critical late season. So we have to know what growth stage the crop is at to know if we still need to manage those aspects. So the next question becomes, how do you accurately stage a corn crop? And it's a little more difficult with corn than some of our other crops because our corn cobs are behind those shucks. And what we like to say when we're staging a crop is get, get a, a plant part or a cob, maybe it's a sorghum head or a couple of soybean pods that are representative of the field. Like I said, it's a little harder with this, but what you wanna do is try to look for one that has a more consistent size as everything else you've seen in the field. Once you've identified that plant or maybe that cob, we wanna make sure we're focused on the primary cob. Some of these uh, corn plants can have one, two, maybe even three cobs. A bulk majority of your yield will come from that primary, often that first cob that the plant set. So we have to identify that cob and that's the one we're, we're looking at maturity. You can look at maturity at some of the subsequent cobs, but you wanna base a lot of your decisions on that primary cob. What we're gonna look at today is some of our late season uh, growth stages. And, and the one we're gonna focus on first is what we call dent. Now, dent is actually when that corn kernel begins its dry down process and we start getting a lot of that water coming out of the grain as we're heading towards maturity. Uh, for dent stage, you can actually accurately estimate the stage by not even taking the cob off the plant. If you're like me, I come out here almost daily sometimes and look at the stage. If you're ripping cobs off all the time, you can lose some yield. So what we wanna do is looking at dent, we just wanna peel back the shucks a little bit. When we look at dent, we can have various stages of dent. It can be real early dent to where maybe just a couple of kernels are starting to get that indention, or it can be uh, mid dent or even full dent to where the whole cob is dented and we got a pretty consistent dent uh, throughout. Once we get full dent, what you're more concerned with is actually the kernels uh, within the ear. And if we, take, if we take an ear that we're very concerned with or that we're interested in, and we can split the shucks, what we're going to do is, is take a look at the maturity of the individual grain here. Because this corn ear does mature differently from the top to bottom, we often like to split it in half and look at the maturity of the top and the bottom part. When we look at the maturity of the top and the bottom part, we see once we get that dent, we're going to start forming what's called a milk line. Uh, this milk line is, is when we're going from a more uh, sugary, uh, maybe even small chain carbohydrates into our more starchy material. That starchy material is going to be a little more uh, crisp of a yellow color or may maybe even a sharper white color as it gets down into the endosperm. Uh, whenever it's more in that milky area, it's going to be more opaque or cloudy. And, and actually, if you put your finger into it, you're going to squish it a little bit. If you're familiar with wheat, it's almost the difference between a hard dough and a soft dough is what we're looking at here. Now this milk line will progress from the top of the kernel to the bottom. And what we're looking at is going from the top to the bottom takes about 28 days. It goes about a quarter of the kernel a week. And so we can determine if we're 75% milk, which would be just a little bit under the top, 50% or a quarter milk, which is almost all the way down to the bottom. We can determine if maybe we have one, two, or potentially three weeks to physiological maturity. Uh, and that's our next stage. So once we've looked at the milk line, what if we're milk line is gone? We're looking for physiological maturity and you identify that by looking at the individual kernel themselves. If you take that kernel and you actually scratch the bottom of that kernel, you're looking for a, 
a, a little thin black layer at the bottom of the kernel, which is physiological maturity, or as it's termed, black layer. Once you see that black layer, sometimes you can actually scratch it off with your fingernails, so you might have to look at a couple of them. But once you reach black layer, we have reached that last maturity stage. That corn kernel is basically separated from that cob. Things that happen to that plant, to the vegetative material of that plant, potentially no longer affect that kernel uh, as much as it did before. What we're in is, is basic dry down. Once we've reached black layer, this corn kernel is approximately 30% moisture. Now in some varieties it can be as, as, as low as 25 or it could be as high as 50, but you take on average about 30% moisture where we like to see harvest more along the lines of 15 to 20% moisture. 20 if you got on-farm drying systems, 15 if you don't, and, and you can just go ahead and directly deliver it to the mill. Now, time it takes to dry down the individual kernels once you've reached black layers is highly variable. It's gonna depend on one, your variety. Uh, it's also gonna depend on what your starting moisture was. It, it goes a lot more rapidly in the beginning. If you already start out at 30% moisture, you're probably not gonna be as high as if you start out at 50% moisture, but it's gonna mainly depend on the heat and the humidity. Really hot, dry conditions are gonna dry this down a lot faster than uh, really hot and, and really muggy conditions or cooler conditions paired with either muggy or, or drier conditions. So we want a good heat, a good dry heat to dry this down really quick. If we're like we are in August trying to dry this plant down, we're looking at around 0.8 to about 1% moisture dry down a day. If we're later in September, uh, maybe even October, maybe you're looking at double crop corn later into November, December, we're looking at maybe a quarter to a half percent moisture a day. So if we're at 30% moisture and we're still wanting to get down to 15, we still got about two more weeks until we can run the combine through the field. So in this case, what we have here is, is this corn plant is about, uh, if you will, this is about 50% milk line and 25% milk line. So we're maybe 10 to 14 days till physiological maturity and then potentially two more weeks. So we have about a month left until we're going to be harvesting this plant. Um, we'll take a look at this a little bit later in the season and look at black layer as we go into harvest season, but that's been all. This has been identifying your growth stage and maturity of corn, corn later in the season. Thank you and please join us next, next time. <laughs>